So a surgical sperm retrieval is a procedure or an operation uh, to try and obtain sperm from men who have a very low numbers or, or more commonly zero uh, sperm in the ejaculate. Um, and that can be done um, while the patient's awake using a, a local anesthetic and a needle through a procedure called PISA. Um, or uh, if um, there is uh, more difficulty or the um, chances of finding sperm are lower, then a more invasive procedure called a microtesi uh, is an operation whilst under a general anaesthetic to uh, go through both testes to look for sperm. So there are, there are two types of um, causes for no sperm in the ejaculate, either a blockage or so-called obstruction or obstructive azoospermia, uh, or testicular failure where there is a, a problem with the sperm production, and that's called non-obstructive azoospermia or NOA. Um, and the, the procedures and the surgery performed to try and retrieve sperm is different for each. So in a blockage, it's often quite straightforward to obtain sperm, and that can be done under a local anaesthetic using a, uh, a needle uh, passed into the tubes around the testis in a procedure called a PISA or percutaneous epididymal sperm aspiration. If um, there is a production problem uh, or the non-obstructive azoospermia, then the best procedure uh, with the highest odds of being able to find sperm is a microdissection TZ, and that's a procedure done using a microscope whilst the patient is asleep under a general anaesthetic, uh, and it's more akin to a, an open biopsy or an operation really on the testes to try and find sperm. A, uh, a microdissection TZ or a micro TZ is, is the best way of performing a surgical sperm retrieval when there is non-obstruction or non-obstructive non azoospermia and it carries the highest uh, success rates. And the reason for that is it's a very detailed um, look. It's looking hard, essentially. Um, the testes are opened and all the areas are, are searched under a, an operating microscope. And we look for the best or the largest seminiferous tubules that we can find. So we're selecting out, with the aid of the microscope, the best tubules. Um, the tubules maybe that are near the blood supply uh, and selecting them out and giving them to um, the embryologist to examine. And in that way, uh, you're minimizing trauma or damage to the testicle and maximizing uh, the chances of finding a source of sperm production. We do surgical sperm retrievals in men where, there, most commonly when there are no sperm present in the ejaculate, or very, very small numbers and insufficient numbers or quality to perform assisted conception. The surgical sperm retrieval is, is a day case procedure. Um, there isn't a great deal of preparation required. Um, in terms of optimization, then obviously a healthy lifestyle, uh, which is good for us in general, is particularly good for sperm health and sperm production. Um, and therefore all advice around male fertility to do with lifestyle and diet um, is useful. Um, if, if, if a patient is taking steroids or testosterone or anabolic steroids, then that has to be stopped because that can suppress sperm production and has to be stopped for a number of months before uh, attempting a surgical sperm retrieval. Uh, and finally, there's some medications, including uh, the so-called gonadotrophins, um, aromatase inhibitors, etc., medications that can, uh, certainly according to some studies, improve the outcome of um, a surgical sperm retrieval. So a, a local anaesthetic um, PISA that we perform for mainly for blockages or obstruction is a very minimally invasive procedure. We use the same size needle as we do for a, for a blood test. Uh, and therefore the risks are minimal. Uh, risks include bruising, maybe some bleeding and discomfort, but that essentially is it. Um, if you're having the more invasive micro -TZ, then obviously that's an operation on the scrotum and the testes, and that can involve a risk of bleeding, bruising, swelling, pain, 
uh, very rarely damage the testicle or the structures uh, that supply blood to the testis, but that is quite unusual. Uh, and finally, um, if the testes are very small or the testosterone levels are, are low beforehand, then there is a risk of a, of a drop in the testosterone level postoperatively, which very often uh, it recovers and is reversible. Uh, again, very rarely indeed, but um, it may be, uh, in the worst case scenario, a requirement for testosterone treatment, but that's very rare. So uh, recovery after a, a PISA is very quick indeed. It's a walk in, walk out procedure really. Um, back to work the next day, I would, I would say in most cases. Um, for the micro -TZ, um, then I tend to advise a week off work for people to uh, allow things to settle. If it's a very physical, manual work that they're doing, maybe two weeks off, but essentially after two weeks, most of the bruising and the swelling should have settled. So the success rate of uh, surgical sperm retrieval in the case of a blockage, such as a vasectomy, is very high indeed. In excess of 95%, uh, we should be able to uh, retrieve sperm through one technique or the other, most commonly just using the percutaneous minimally invasive PISA uh, approach. Um, in cases of non-obstructive azoospermia or where there's a production problem with the sperm, it's a slightly different case. Um, and on average, we find sperm in around half or 50% of people, but it does depend a lot on the underlying cause of the testicular failure and also other parameters such as the size of the testes and certain blood tests such as your FSH or follicle stimulating hormone levels. So we do use a few uh, preoperative tests as a guide and also genetic studies, uh, but overall around half of men with testicular failure we, we will find sperm on surgical sperm retrieval.